Hi, welcome to The Sacred Journey. The Sacred Journey is the program that reminds you that life is a wonderful adventure and each and every experience we have is a unique and perfect opportunity for learning. I'm Joyce St. Germain and this program is rock reading, also known as stone gazing. I thought this would be just a beautiful setting to introduce it to you. I say introduce because it's usually a two hour long workshop, but I want to tell you a little bit about it and you can decide if you'd ever like to pursue it on your own or in some kind of a more organized way. When I say rocks or stones, I'm talking about something about this size. When you choose a rock, it should be something that has variations in the surface. And also something that has an obvious top and bottom or something that you can determine or assign a top and bottom. And then just be consistent with it during that particular reading. So rock reading, again, also known as stone gazing, is a shamanic practice that's probably been done in most cultures and um, still being done in many cultures, even outside of shamanism. It's based on the understanding that everything has a life force or life essence in it. Every plant, every rock or stone, every tree, every animal, every human, things that we can identify or even see, feel, or touch. Everything has a life force. And when we work with the natural elements, we are able to partner with them in a way to enhance, I'll say all life, not just for ourselves. So when we learn rock reading, we're learning it to gather some answers or some insight or some understanding on things happening in our lives but we can also use it to help people to gain some understanding about what's happening in their lives also. Nothing that I'm sharing with you should take the place of common sense. Also, please always use your intuition, your gut feeling when you're working on things. I also like to use something to look into this a little deeper. For me, it's usually a shamanic journey. After I get my imagery from the rocks, which I'll be demonstrating, I then do a shamanic journey to gain a deeper understanding. You could do it through a meditation. You could do it through some kind of contemplative work. You can do it through using cards, and I'll demonstrate one set that works particularly well for these. But let's get going. If you have a rock, it should be at least fist size, okay? As I explained before, it should have some variations and some interesting markings. The reason for that is we want to see images. To prepare for this, you would go into a meditative or quiet state if you're doing something that is new to you and you're not used to going into um, higher levels of consciousness or altered states of awareness, a very good place and way to start is to, well, I'm going to start actually a little back up for me. I'm going to back up a little bit and teach you something called centered breathing. As you can see, this was kind of a spontaneous presentation for me. It was such a beautiful day. The waterfall was calling. I saw my, my treasured rocks and thought, let's do it. So what you will do for centered breathing, it's a great thing to do before um, writing, drawing, dancing, thinking, problem solving. It's a great meditation. It's a great thing for um, hypnosis, a massage before you do anything that involves a little bit of centering. It's actually called centered breathing. You'll close your eyes. You'll take a nice, deep, full breath in through your nose and hold it for your comfortable count of four. And then you will exhale slowly through your mouth, that same comfortable count of four. And if you're more of an experienced breather, you can exhale for the count of eight, but then hold that 
for a count of four. So before you inhale again, then you'll repeat that inhale, hold, exhale, hold, and do it a third time. So beginners, inhale, hold for four, exhale, hold for four. Repeat it for a total of three times, four seconds, inhale through the nose, hold for four, exhale through the mouth, hold for four. Okay, series of three times. You can use the techniques that you know and use on your own. You can certainly lengthen the holding process, especially the exhale process. And then to prepare yourself, gaze at your rock through half opened, half closed eyes. So what you'll do is you'll allow your gaze to soften. I always recommend some exploration. Some people hold it at eye level, some people slightly below eye level. But before you do this, as I said earlier, assign a top and a bottom. For this rock, I'm assigning this as top. It's a little bit more curved. This is bottom. It's a little, um, I'm going to say a little bit flatter. As long as I can remember which is which, I can change next time I do this. Holding it. Half open, half close your eyes so that they are soft, your gaze softens, some of the detail starts changing. Think of the question or the problem or the issue that you would like some understanding on. So I'm thinking of an issue and I'm kind of doing this as a mock demonstration because I'll be talking a lot and I won't be able to focus a lot. Then start gazing at your rock and some of the colors and some of the formations will start forming imagery. You can turn your rock as you're looking at it. You can stop, you can keep turning it. And here, I use this rock a lot. Here's an image I've never noticed before. There is an animal's face. It actually looks like a wolf face facing me. I see the nose, I see the formations of, you know, how they have that um, kind of line with separated into two. I see the two eyes. I am noticing he's facing or gazing at me. Eyes are open, his eyes or her eyes are open. And I would consider this large. After I gather all the information from that one image I can gather, going to see if there's anything else I notice on the same side. I should mention that, in fact, I should have mentioned, the top side is the future, the bottom side is the past. You can start with either the past or the future, okay? So I'm working on the future side right now. Ordinarily, if I were doing a reading, I'd actually start with the past, move on to the future and I'll show you what I do in between to connect the two. But since I started on the top, I'm going to continue looking at the top. I see a bird who looks like a young bird, not a raptor, it doesn't have that kind of beak, facing right. If I were thinking of the medicine wheel, I would say facing east. The head is beautifully formed, but the tail is not. The body is pretty distinct. The head is perfectly outlined. The eye is wide open. It looks healthy. It looks young. It looks as if it's growing and developing. So that's another image I would remember. And they're not all images of animals. I just happen to be seeing two. I'm going to say three. I now see a seahorse with a curved tail, it's also facing east. Now, east is where awakenings happen, where ideas happen, where um, inspiration and intentions happen or occur or are set. The more I look at it, the more images start forming, the more detail starts falling into place. I can now see the entire body and head And as I said, it looks quite healthy. When I let my vision expand a little bit around it, 
I see that it's at the mouth of a cave. I see a curve in the markings of the rock that looks to me very cave-like underwater. I would be taking notes or I would be trying to remember a little bit more carefully than I have the ability to do now since I'm also switching back and forth to, to speak to you and share what I'm finding. You want at least three images. I like to get five. Three is a good number. Now, I'm out here solo, so I have to just check my stopwatch and a few other things and make sure that I'm doing okay, and I am not Ms. Technology, as you can tell. So as I let my gaze soften, a hat comes into play. It looks a bit like a cowboy hat. I can see the little um, kind of indentation in the top, the brim, the roundness of the front. I don't see a person attached. I just see the hat. I'm going to let my gaze soften. The number 37 forms underneath the hat. This is so much easier if you don't try too hard to focus, if you let your gaze soften. I can't say that enough. I'm also letting my gaze spread a little bit, so I'll start noticing other things. There's something in the brim of the hat. It might be a feather, something of a slightly different color. Not really large, not as tall as the hat, about half the size of, I don't know enough about hats to tell you what this part of the hat is called, the part that goes, not the brim, but the other part, about half the height of that. And I'll see if I can find one more image. I see a heart. So when I think of hearts, I always avoided hearts. I thought, oh, they're so corny and they're so silly and they're only about Valentine's and little schoolgirl stuff. And I've come to realize symbolically hearts are really, really powerful because they really are about love and about the heart space. Not the physical heart, but the heart space where love is held, where your soul resides. So I have the heart. So I would look at all four or five or three, however many images I got, and I would record or write or remember as much information about them as I can. Then one way to approach this is to do a journey, a shamanic journey, a meditation, Go into prayer, go into some kind of receptive state. If you do self-hypnosis, go into self-hypnosis. Find out what that series means to you. And the whole goal is to get those images to form like a video to actually connect to each other in some way, to have something to do with each other. For a shamanic journey, when I'm leading a group like this, I'll do either drumming or rattling, and I will either instruct them or guide them or invite them into the lower worlds, upper worlds, um, or middle worlds, depending on exactly what we're doing and what the goals are. To use cards to do this, you would choose the cards and ask, what is the meaning of the cards that I chose that represent the future? And as I said, my apologies, I usually do the past first, but for some reason I started with the future, so we'll leave it at the future. Now the cards I'm using are the deck called Seeking Within, and it's artwork by Laurie Barker, written by Paula Bush, both dear friends of mine. Whenever I choose cards, I've demonstrated this in different um, shows or episodes before, I let my fingers support the cards with my thumb just guiding it. I hold it on an angle, I set my intention, and I just start shuffling the cards until either one sticks out, pops out, sometimes they jump out, land on the floor or on the table. I'm outside now, so I don't have um, many places for them to land. There's one. See how that's falling right out? That's the card. Two cards came out. That means I have two bits of information that are going to help me. 
One is titled Dis-Ease. I have to show you how beautiful these cards are. Artwork by Laurie Barker. Words and writing by Paula Bush. There's um, a lot more information about how to use them. You'll see there's different color backgrounds and each is divided into four sections, each group of colors. I'm not going to go into that now. I'll just share these particular cards. Dis-ease. Dis-ease is a lack of ease in the body and disease is an illness with signs and symptoms. When the world's pace overwhelms us, we're vulnerable to physical and spiritual health disorders. Is it time for you to combine the skills of conventional and alternative care? Your body and spirit are life partners. Return your health to wholeness, holistically. The second card that came out with it, you remember I asked for a card, but when two or more come out, I honor them all. Sage. The sage is the sacred aspect of us that is without ego or ambition. It's dedicated to learning, gathering wisdom and teaching through living and sharing stories with family and community. Acknowledge your sacred sage. It may be quiet and receptive or lively and boisterous. When sharing wisdom, detach from drama. Truth needs no adornment. So if this were really a reading that I were doing for myself or for someone else, I would have spent more time going into that altered state. I would spend more time um, analyzing and contemplating what this means. I'd probably have spent more time gathering my images. But you get the idea. Then I would take the same rock and flip it over. That's why it's important to have a rock that you can determine two sides to. And the other side was the future. This is the past. And again, forgive me for going out of order when I usually do it, but I'm being really spontaneous today. I would go into that altered state. The sound of the water, by the way, is very soothing. It easily can put me into a nice altered state. You probably hear the sound of, I don't know if it's a lawnmower or a weed whacker, although I live out in the woods and we have a beautiful waterfall to soften things, there's still some non-nature sounds. A little while ago, there were some beautiful hawks singing their, I call them shrieking songs that I love. So I'm going to look at the bottom. I'm going to allow my gaze to soften. I'm going to hold the same question or intention. And by the way, without getting deeply personal and without really digging in, both of those cards have great meaning to me right now. So as far as the question I was asking, even though it was mock, I still had a little something in mind. So I'm going to look at the other side, allow my gaze to soften. Some people gaze straight down. I like to gaze a little bit at an angle because I find it's easier to keep my eyes half open, half closed. I see a person whose eyes are unnaturally open and their mouth is open as if they are trying to get somebody's attention. They are making a lot of noise. They are being sure that they will be heard. In another part of the stone, I see just an eye, literally an eye, shaped like a human eye. Although I can't be certain that it's human because there's... It's got the shape of a human eye, but I know there are a lot of other animals that have that shape. So before I say that, I'll just say it's an eye of unknown origin. I see a member of the large cat family. It could be a jaguar. It could be um, a cougar or a panther. Since I work with jaguars so much, going to interpret it as jaguar. It is facing southwest. Eyes are open. Ears are in a relaxed position or pose. It does not look as if it's um, feeling threatened. It just looks as if it's, I'll say inquisitive because the eyes are open.
I'm turning my rock around. You probably can't tell because I would be holding it slightly differently. Ah, I see a turtle swimming. Um, all four legs are out. I see the ripples where it's making marks in the water. I see the ripples going out and there are more ripples at the north. The north is the place of stillness, the place of, um, I call it unlimited possibility, of blank slate, uh, blank canvas, blank piece of paper, no intentions been set. That's why I call it unlimited possibility. There's another heart here. Hearts are easy to find in, um, in rock reading or stone gazing. There's a frog, which I've never noticed. I've looked at this rock many times. It's a little frog, and interestingly enough, I don't know what's been happening behind me, but there is a frog that lives there that sometimes comes out and sings while I'm holding ceremony or a workshop out here. He's usually right in about that corner right there. I haven't seen him yet, but when I think of the medicines of these animals, that's also a clue. Frog is about cleansing keeping your thoughts clean, keeping your body clean by not putting toxic things in it or things that don't align with who you are. Turtle medicine is the med, and also keep your environment clean, yours and the environment at large. Turtle is about feeling close or bringing yourself close to the earth, to be a part of the earth, not apart from the earth. Um, jaguar or the cats are about I call it the inner knowing, inner vision, inner medicine, the using your inner senses. I'm trying to think of what other animals I may have noticed. I don't remember, which is why I usually write things down. So think about what it means to you. It could have a totally different meaning, these images, than they would for someone else based on your past experiences. So after I get all of my images, and again, I have to keep checking my clients once they want facial ID. I'm going to just use a code now. Okay. After I get the images I want, I'm going to, because I started with cards, I'm going to choose from the same deck of cards to ask for an understanding. I like the word understanding because it's not just about information. It's about what to do with the information you come up. So that's why I like understanding and who's ever working in their yard, they're really in, really involved now. So I apologize for the sounds getting a little larger. So holding my intention. Let's see what card wants to be chosen or chooses to emerge right there. See how it gets poked out once again. It's two cards, not one. We'll use them both joy joy is the natural expression of spirit that connects us to all that we are and all that is it emanates from a deep sense of belonging we stop allowing ourselves joy as our minds settle into negative patterns of shame guilt or desire for now cease striving become quiet and open your curiosity to the miracle of life and uncover the magical feeling of joy. Don't know if you're aware of it, but for some reason I started hearing the water coming through with a little bit more force, which is quite interesting. Life cycles. Life cycles are the changes we go through from birth to old age and beyond. You may be experiencing shifts that cause you to feel unsettled and confused. Please know you are completing another life cycle lesson readying yourself for the next. This is an initiation, helping shape your future. So don't push it away, except it's already here. So once again, these cards are called the Seeking Within cards. Paula Bush did the, the words on them and the, the thoughts, and um, Laurie Barker did the, the artwork. I think I have to be wrapping up soon. I can't believe our time went by this quickly. So remember, rock reading, stone gazing. You'll hear it called all different things. 
if you're only using the rocks for reading, you can quickly use them again for another reading. I like to take a white feather and just with my intentions, wash away any images that will be, I'll call them stuck from my last reading so that I feel new, like I feel I have a fresh pair of eyes. These are not the same rocks that you would use in healing work. Okay, that I'll cover in another, um, in another episode and you would handle those differently just as you would use them differently and you'd prepare them differently so i think our time together has come to an end i'm gonna just double check to be sure and it has thank you so much for joining us on the sacred journey we'll catch you next time